Hello and welcome to Amaranth Thine Art. Today I'm going to be showing you how I put together a birthday card using the Greeting Farms Perfect Cats stamp set. As always I'll leave a link in the description box below to my blog which will include all the supplies used in today's video. So this stamp set includes three adorable cats as well as some accessories to go along with the images such as the mouse and the cupcake and the ball. It also includes three really cute sentiments including I love Mew, Happy Purr Day and Wishing You a Perfect Day. The first thing I'm going to do today is stamp out my images that I want to use on my card onto some Nina Solar White cardstock using Memento Tuxedo Black Ink. And I'm using the Smiley Happy Cat um, along with three cupcakes. For the colouring today I'm using my Copic markers using a series of cool greys to create a neutral coloured cat. I'm using C00, C2 and C8 and to create a mid-tone I'm touching the C2 to the C8 marker to create a smoother blend. I'm going to turn on some music while I finish colouring with the Copic markers and I'll come back to you once I've finished this section. For the background of my card I wanted to create an ombre effect using some distress inks. So I'm taping my card base down to my craft mat and I'm using some masking tape just to make sure that I don't go over those lines. And I'm going to be using the distress inks in the middle section. So for the distress inks I'm using a Dusty Concord which is a dark purple blueprint sketch which is a medium blue and then peacock feathers which is a kind of an aqua turquoise colour and I'm starting with the dusty concord at the top working my way down to peacock feathers at the bottom. Now this cardstock isn't necessarily meant for blending distress inks so it's not 
it's not a resilient cardstock, so it did take me quite some time um, to blend these inks together. But after some perseverance, I was really happy with the end result. So sometimes you just have to keep going backwards and forwards with the distress inks until you get the, the end result that you want. And also a thing to note is that when these distress inks dry, they tend to blend better. They look worse when they're wet, in my opinion, on some of these cardstocks. So if you give it time to rest and then if you're happy with it, you can continue um, or try and make something else. But for me, I let this rest for a little while before I moved on to the next bit to make sure it was exactly what I wanted um, to go with my characters that I've already created. So once I finished that section, I then let it sit for a couple of minutes before peeling back the masking tape. I know I thought it looked a little bit blotchy, but once I let it sit for a while, it started to blend um, and dry a lot better. So I put this aside while I then started to fussy cut all my images. Now once I fussy cut all my images, I then go around all the edges with a memento black marker. For me, it just makes my images look a lot tidier. I've stamped them with black ink and now I've cut them out, they've got a white edge, so I just like to tidy that up if I don't purposely leave a, a white border. So I tend to go from the back of the image um, with this pen rather than from forwards because sometimes your pen can slip and then you end up drawing on the image you've spent a while colouring. So for me, I always go from the back. So once I've done the images in the same way, I then move on to my sentiment panel. Now I'm using a piece of generic turquoise cardstock from my local craft store and I'm using Lawn Fawn's Valentine's Border um, to create a bit of interest on this panel and I'm actually using the one with the arrows um, all along the edge. So you'll see in a minute how this looks once I've die cut it. And then I'm going to use the Happy Per Day sentiment from the same stamp set as the cats and the cupcakes and I'm using the perfect medium embossing ink for this along with some Hero Arts um, white embossing powder. It stands out really nice along that turquoise and just ties it in with the rest of the card. So once I've heat set that I can then move on to putting the card together. I'm using some foam tape to adhere my sentiment panel down just to give it a bit of dimension on that distressed background. Once I've added that down, I'm just going to trim off the edges to make it look neater. And then I'm going to start positioning where I want the cat and the cupcakes to sit on top of the um, distressed background. So I normally have a play around with where I think things should go before I stick them down. Because I don't want to stick them down first and then try and pull up the images, which could then ruin the background that I've spent time on. So I'm just adhering these down with some Scotch 3mm foam tape and then I'm going to add some final touches to the card just to make it pop that little bit more. And I'm going to use my C2 and C00 Copic marker that I've used on the cat just to add a shadow so he's not floating in midair. And then I'm going to add some details to the cupcakes. So I've just used some of the C2 and I'm just going to blend it out with the C00 just to eliminate those harsh lines. To add some sprinkle detail onto the cupcake frosting, I'm using the Nouveau Crystal Drops in Caribbean Ocean and Gloss White. Um, I'm just using some very small dots of this um, and I think it just adds a bit more interest and dimension to the card. And then I will also use 
the Nouveau Crystal Drops in black um, to make the eyes and nose of the cat pop as well. So it's very small detail, but it's these little things that I like adding to a card. Um, I think it just finishes it off really well. And I like to add small bits of dimension on a fairly simple card like this. So one of the easiest things I've found is if you squeeze the bottle very slightly and then do a circle motion, it stops it from peaking too much. It ends up being a really nice rounded dome. So once I've finished with the Nouveau Crystal Drops, I'm then going to finish the base of the cupcakes with a couple of layers of a clear wink of Stella Glitter Pen. And this just adds a final bit of glittery detail to a fairly simple card. So once I've done that, that will finish the card for today. I really wanted to create a bright and fun birthday card following the Christmas season. So let me know what you think about this in the comments below. Also, I've changed my camera angle and zoom. So again, let me know if you find this better than my previous videos. Um, but a link will be in the description box below with my blog, um, which will include the details of all the supplies and where you can find um, the products that I've used in today's video. So thanks for watching and I'll be back next week with another video. Bye!